Hey guys, Mr. Barnes here uh, again, uh, bringing you another exciting maths video. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, rotational symmetry, how do we tell if an object has rotational symmetry, and a couple of other things that go along with rotational symmetry as well. Um, so here I have some random symbol that I found, and we're going to rotate it, and we're going to see if it has rotational symmetry. Um, so let me rotate it and see what happens. So if I rotate this uh, around. We reach this point right here, where something magical kind of happens, right? It sort of looks exactly like it was from in the start. And I do the same thing again, and it happens again. And again it happens, and again, another time, and then finally we're back to the start. So what we saw there was that this image, as we rotated it around, it coincided with itself. Uh, several times. So basically, if that's a fancy way of saying is we rotated around, and it looked exactly like it did when we started. Okay, so when I rotated it here, it doesn't look any different right here than it did at the start. Not a thing. Okay, so the definition of rotational symmetry in uh, fancy terms is coincides with itself uh, in a rotation of less than 360 degrees. Okay, so somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees, the object has to coincide with itself. The reality is that if it doesn't do it by 180, then there's a pretty good chance that it's not going to do it. Okay, um, so that's rotational symmetry. It coincides with itself in a rotation of less than uh, 360 degrees. Uh, with rotational symmetry, there are a couple definitions that we need to know in order, uh, order of rotation. So order of rotation is basically asking the question is how many times does it coincide with itself? So if we look at this thing, we start, we got one, two, three, four, five, and then we're back to start, six. So my order of rotation simply is equal to six. So hopefully you can visualize in your mind, because you're not going to have that technology on your test, obviously, to be able to rotate this thing. But hopefully you'll be able to visualize in your mind on how to rotate uh, this object. So just visualize that you're actually taking it and turning it. Um, and if need be, uh, use some tracing paper if you have to. Uh, and the last thing we'll talk about in this video is angle of rotation. So what's it mean for for... Uh, what's it mean angle of rotation? Well, angle of rotation simply um, is defined by this formula. It's um, 360 degrees divided by 6. So if we do that calculation, my angle of rotation is 60. So it's the time it takes to do, or sorry, the uh, ro one full rotation, 360 degrees, divided by the order of rotation. 6. And we can sort of see that where that comes from. If we rotate this object one time, oops, we rotate it from here to here, we see that the angle of rotation is simply how long does it take for the object to coincide with itself, or how much of a rotation does it take for the object to coincide with itself. So we see that this object uh, from here to here, or rotate it, it's 60 degrees. And that's it. Uh, another thing I should mention, though, is we never say an object has order of rotation 1. So if we had an object um, that didn't have rotational symmetry, so let me just uh, bring up a random object here. Uh, let me cut this out and go to a blank page. Um, this object right here, if we rotate this thing, um, it's never going to coincide with itself, except when we get back to a full 360 degree rotation. Uh, this object does not have an order of rotation of one. It has an order. It doesn't have an order of rotation. We simply say that it's not uh, has no rotational symmetry. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. That's a common mistake that sometimes people make. But yeah, uh, rotational symmetry uh, coincides itself in a rotation of less than 60 degrees. All right, thanks guys. This helped.